you're never alone But I can't comprehend Whenever you go Time flows and decays When you've gone away What is up y'all? I am back with another video and today is just another true crime case. If you guys are here for makeup on my channel, I will be doing an updated um, video of what's going to be going on on my YouTube channel and uh, just what's been going on a little bit just to keep you guys a little bit informed if you guys are not on my other social medias. But I do have another true crime case for you guys and I'm going to make a little disclaimer because of my other videos. I am not claiming to be an expert. I do my best to research every case and get every information I can uh, put together and into a timeline for you guys so it's easier for you guys to understand and uh, get their information out there so we can help uh, get whether it needs to be finding someone, uh, finding the missing person, or whatever it may be that I am covering. It's just really to help uh, solve that case or get something to help that case and just get the exposure on that case. So all I ask for you guys on the comment below to be respectful to not only me, but to the victims and everybody I speak about during the case. This is not to uh, spread hate, it's really to help bring theories and everything you can. So if you are not going to be helping the case, please don't comment below. You're really not doing anything but just wasting everybody's time. Um, so please just help the case and I know I need to work on a couple things with everything. But every day I will get better at recording, uh, editing. And talking about these cases so I'm probably way more way more aware of everything more than you guys so I'm not saying like if it's helping me but don't you know just be respectful that's all I ask let's just get on to the case of Cynthia Martinez Cynthia was a female that was five foot one 135 pounds and she had dark brown eyes and dark black hair I am gonna read off all of her tattoos that she has so I can make sure I'm not missing them or making sure I'm not missing what they say and just making sure they're very clarified um, so her tattoo that was on her collarbone was a crown then she had a name uh, Dominique guys I'm gonna just put it right here I'm very bad at uh, pronouncing names a phrase called trust no one which is ironic of just kind of how she disappeared and then she also had the words faith and trust on her arms angelica her mom recalled calling around to all of her friends to make sure she had every tattoo uh clarified just to make sure she wasn't missing anything because she would not always know about all the tattoos that Cynthia would get until like maybe the next couple of days after she got them so she wanted to make sure that when writing down all the tattoos that she knew of was all accurate and up to date. Cynthia was a dedicated mother of four children. She had children going up to two months old all the way up to 11 years old. She was also the oldest of six siblings. She really loved music and just spending time with her family. She was very of a she just really was family oriented and wanted to always be around her family and do things with her family. She also was known to always cook some shrimp dishes so she was very well known in making delicious shrimp dishes for the families for like events or anything going on. She just would make shrimp uh, catered dis dishes. Every time her mom thinks about her all she thinks about is how much she would laugh and joke around and when she would laugh she would just laugh laugh and laugh until she would start crying you know those laughs that you just can't stop laughing and you're crying of tears and then like your stomach was hurting she would that's what she thinks of when she thinks of her daughter Cynthia the day of 
her going missing, Angelica and her husband, which is Cynthia's stepfather, took her out to breakfast that morning at Denny's just to celebrate her birthday. That was actually two days earlier to the day she disappeared. For the next following day, Cynthia made plans and had the idea to go hiking at Silver Falls with her family to just celebrate her birthday. That night, Cynthia went to a quinceanera at 5 p.m. in Woodburn. I don't know whose uh, birthday party this was. It never really stated anywhere whose it was, but I assume it was someone uh, very close to her because she's 26 and they're 15, so it must have been like a family friend, someone she grew up with, so like sister or something along those lines, like a cousin or something. If anybody knows who this was, please let me know down below. I want to know whose birthday party this was, if they ever figured it out. But when she went to this birthday party, her mom would watch her kids so she could go out. And this was the very first time that Cynthia went out since having her two month old. She wore a black laced up booties. She wore a black floral romper and some fake eyelashes. Along with being uh, her first time going out since having her baby, she was also on leave from work where she worked at a clothing manufacturer. She also wanted to go back to school and become a police officer. At 10.30, her mom texted her to check in on her and see how everything was going. Then Cynthia texted her back, replying that she is still at the party and they haven't even cut the cake yet. Then her mom responded, okay, be careful. After that, it went silent on Cynthia's end. Shortly after the text messages Cynthia exchanged with her mom, her friends invited her to go out to a bar that was nearby. This was in Kaiser. Angelica informed Cynthia that she would text her around one o'clock after church to talk about going on this hike. But when she did this, there was no reply on Cynthia's end. Her mom didn't freak out right away just thinking oh she had a late night so she was sleeping in so she didn't really think much of it so she reached out to her other siblings to check and see if they heard anything from her as well to find out none of them had heard from her and she also didn't return that night before. When they realized she didn't come home that night, they, they thought something was immediately wrong because this was just not like her to not reply one thing and just not come home without any word to her family. When her mom did reach out to the Woodburn police, they informed her that there was not much they could do for her. Cynthia was an adult, so she has every right to leave. You hear this story all the time. The adult goes missing. Police won't do anything because they are over 18. They had the right to leave without any notice, but her family knew she would not just leave. So Cynthia being frustrated, she decided to take on the investigation on her own, knowing police were not going to help her. When she started reaching out to the friends that Cynthia was with the night before, she figured out that she met up with another friend at the bar. When Cynthia went on her investigation, she reached out to the friends that she was with at the party and figured out that her friends invited her out to another bar and they left to go to Tequila Night that was in Kaiser near the state capital of Salem. The bar address is 3392 River Road North. When they were at the bar, Cynthia didn't have any pockets to put her ID and phone in, so she gave it to her friend that she was with until they ended up leaving without her, which if you don't know this rule, please do not leave your friends at the bar, whether there's any rule. If they meet someone, anything, please do not leave your friends alone at a bar. It doesn't ever end well. It might by oh, luck, but please don't ever leave your friends alone. It's just not a safe thing to do. Cynthia's mom and her stepfather drove to the bar the next day to meet with management and they reviewed the footage of the night before when Cynthia was there and they didn't see anything out of the ordinary happen that night. It showed her entering the bar shortly after 11 p.m with her girlfriends and two other men with them. But she figured out that she did not know the other two men, so it wasn't like a double date type thing. But she did know the girl that she was with, so she knew 
at least one of the three people. So I'm gonna go into what the footage kind of has to say and it's gonna get a little bit confusing so I'm gonna kind of read it off into about two parts so you guys get two reports of what I found of what the video footage showed to you guys. But I will um, pretty much insert, insert the picture of what they're kind of talking about of the main thing of finding who she left with. So I'm gonna also read this off so I'm making sure that nothing is misencountered because it is kind of confusing. So for the first uh, report that I have about her being in the footage, they see the friend and the two men leave the bar. Then 15, 10 to 15 minutes later, Cynthia leaves alone to shortly come back on footage with a man. Okay, so here's the second reporting of what describes as the security footage. They notice her leaving and uh, with an unknown suspect, Hispanic man, after leaving with the man, she was seen re-entering the bar alone, speculated that she was looking for her friend. But whichever is co correct, the biggest thing is on both reports, she was seen with a Hispanic man leaving around 2.35 a.m. Sunday, July 16th. Her family speculate why her friend left her alone at the bar was because one of the men were driving and then they encountered that man that she was seen with and they said that they would drive her home and were going in the direction she was going to Woodburn to take her home so they left thinking she would be getting a ride home. A witness encountered that she was going into in a blue minivan with two Hispanic men and I didn't say if she was forced into this minivan or if she was going in willingly but she was going in a minivan leaving the bar that night with two Hispanic men. Her mom speculated why she did take the offer to go with the men was because she had no phone, she had no way to get home, and her friend just left her there. So she was very far away from her house and they said they were going to Woodburn where she lived. So she thought it would be okay. And she thinks why she actually trusted them in was because she saw car seats in the back of the van thinking, oh, these guys are safe and I'll be okay. Which I never figured out how they knew there were car seats in the back of the car, so I don't know if they saw them. I don't know if they ever figured that out, like how they figured that out. These are all theories of what the mom said. It never really stated if they found the exact van or if they found a van that looks kind of like the one described. After finding out all this information, her mom posted on Facebook of a picture of the guy from the footage. People did come forward and told them who he was and where he actually lived, which his name was Jamie Alvarez Oliveira. I don't know if I'm saying that right. He is 32, he's five foot, and he's 120 pounds with black hair and brown eyes, as well as his address was stated. So they didn't obviously inform of put that out of what his address was. So we're not gonna be sharing that with you guys. But when she found out all this information, she took it to herself to actually go to this address and hopefully confront him. But when she did get to the Woodburn residence, a woman answered the door and her mom started asking questions. Do you know who this guy is? Do you know where he is? All that good stuff. And there actually was a blue minivan in the driveway as well. And that's how I'm thinking they knew there was car seats because maybe they saw that van, looked inside, there was car seats. So that's where I'm getting all that information kind of put together. That's how I'm looking at it. But the woman denied knowing who Jamie was was her mom kept pressing trying to figure out everything the woman denied it and shut the door on angelica's face angelica being the mom she is she kept knocking and knocking and knocking trying to get this woman to answer until the cops were called by someone when the cops arrived angelica of course explained what was going on why she was there and everything going on and the police 
despite one of them being very nice to her, they said because it didn't happen in that area, they would have to go to the Kaiser police to report the incident and everything. And of course, she did exactly that. By this time, it was 2 a.m. that following Monday, and since it had been 24 hours since Cynthia has been missing, the police finally took on her case and started investigating immediately. Which, don't know if you guys know, the 24 hour reasoning and everything is not like a le legitimate thing. So hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but if it ever does, you do not have to wait 24 hours. You can file a report right away. So you don't have to wait 24 hours. You can do it right away. You just have to really press it. An email from the Kaiser Deputy Police Chief Jeffrey Kunz, Kunz, I don't know if I'm saying that right. He told Dateline that Cynthia's family reported her missing the next following Monday, July 17th, 2017. So Cynthia kind of went missing between July 15th that night and July 16th that Sunday morning. Deputy Chief Kunz explained to Dateline that a detective was assigned right away to the case and other investigators joined into the investigation. Three weeks into the investigation, Jamie was named a person of interest, but not a suspect because there was no motive at this point in the investigation. And the second man remained anonymous just because he was cooperative and helping in the investigation. He was also dropped from being a person of interest. Jamie was last employed as a farm laborer. This labor firm would call in every day and would tell him about different labor jobs he needed to be at on a daily basis. During this investigation, they did find out that Jamie fled that Sunday, July 16th, and they don't know where he fled to. Rumors speculate that he left to Mexico. But if police decided that they would jump on the case right away, they probably could have either caught him or be a lot farther in finding him in the investigation. So I'm also gonna read off a police statement that leads into what they want for people helping to find them. So police ask if anyone in the rural farmland or forested areas northeast of Kaiser, Brooks, Lake Lavish, Silverton, Mount Angel, Scottsmill, or Malala. I'm gonna write it right here because I don't know how to spell it or say that, and has a scene a blue 2014 Honda Odyssey minivan with a Washington license plate of BBF2657 or captured the vehicle on surveillance or trail cameras between Sunday, July 16th and 2017 around 2.30 a.m. and Monday, July 17th around 11.45 a.m report to the police. Meaning when Angelica was at his house, he was in town or even there since she did see the blue minivan, which to me is very frustrating. Okay, I'm gonna not get into it, okay? Everything time I think about that, like the police were there, she was there, the blue minivan was there. Was he there? Was Cynthia there? Like. It's just crazy to think about, like, she was so close, like, if police just kind of, yeah, you get my point. I'm going to not get mad right now. Angelica stated that prior to the night of Tequila Night, Cynthia and Jamie did not know each other, so they pretty much met that night. She asked around to her friends and they did not find any connection between the two, besides obviously that night. A month after Cynthia went missing, police officials stated that they spent over a thousand hours on her case, including the FBI and the Oregon Department of Justice, the Marion County District Attorney's Office, and other law enforcement agencies in Marion and adjoining counties. According to National Missing and Identified Persons System, or known as NamUs, there are over 400 open cases in Oregon currently. Angelica and Cesar Costello, who is the stepfather, they would spend weekends and evenings searching around, trying to find anything they could to help the case, hopefully find 
uh, signs of her, her clothing, just her in general, but nothing ever came up. Angelica stated that searching for her just became pretty much hard on her. She would always get excited about finding something, then come up disappointed because they wouldn't find anything. It just became too painful for them to pretty much keep on that routine. So they kind of had to die down of living in that moment. Every time they do hear of an unidentified body that would be found, she would immediately email the Kaiser police that was in charge of Cynthia's case. After two years, her body still has not been found or, or Jamie who is connected to her. There is a reward for $8,000 from the FBI and $2,500 rewards from Crime Starters of Oregon. This remains available to anyone that has info leading to the finding of Cynthia or conviction of the person responsible for her disappearance. The family asked the family of Jamie to speak up. They know that he is family to them, but what he is doing or was doing or anything, what he did is not right and they need to say something or make him say something and find him. Her body not being found still gives the family hope that she could be alive and that her abductor did take her somewhere and is still holding her. This case still remains active, but police decline releasing any more information publicly. Caesar stated that the police don't really tell them too much detail, which they kind of understand why, but they're pretty much left in the dark of what is going on, any leads and all that good stuff but they know kind of why they need to do that. Her mom is very scared that one day her case will close, so she tries her hardest trying to keep her case alive and spread awareness about her case. The Marion County has stated that the case is still going on and stated that a, a grand jury will not come together to hear the case because of a Oregon law. In the event uh, that a grand jury does meet, he is indicted. charges will not be disclosed until a defendant is arrested. Angelica last saw her daughter July 15th, 2017, that Sunday. She has now helped raise her four children that she left behind and keeps telling them that Cynthia is on vacation and they believe that her mom will come home one day. And we are working together to hopefully bring the kids, their mom back, and the family bring their daughter and sister back. Angelica has a full wall of Cynthia's photo in the shape of a rainbow, and this was made by Cynthia's four children. Cynthia's youngest daughter was two months at the time that Cynthia disappeared, and she had a lot of first of since Cynthia left, like her first birthday, her first Christmas, um, she started walking and she had her first words. Cynthia was not there to see all that because of what happened to her and she never could experience that with her. But if you have any information on Cynthia's disappearance or have any information on where Jamie is or were connected to him or even heard from him around on or after July 15th or 16th, please contact the primary investigation detective at Kaiser Police. And this is Detective Andy Phils, and you can contact them at 503-856-3497. Everything also will be listed down below if you guys have any information. Um, and then there are Facebooks and Twitters that you can also follow the case on. A stranger did make a Facebook group called Missing Cynthia Martinez Perez. This is to help spread awareness about Cynthia and her case and hopefully to help find her. And then you can also follow the Twitter account at Missing Cynthia. But other than that, that is all I have about this case. So please, if you guys have any uh, theories about what may have happened to her, where uh, Jamie is, all that good stuff, please leave those comments below. Um, Please just help as much as you can to spread awareness about this case and hopefully we can find Cynthia and bring her home and just, you know, bring some peace to the family because this is very ongoing. Um, they did have just a press release uh, conference about all the information about Jamie just like a month ago or so. So it's very ongoing and very active. So if you guys want to keep an 
following this case, please follow those social medias. But other than that, if you guys have any more case suggestions, please comment them down below. And you can follow me on all my social medias like Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. I'll be linked down below. And don't forget to subscribe so we can um, really help find more people and just find justice for more people. But other than that, I really hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye. Try to get ahead Find out where you go But all I find instead Is the nest that's already